am Dr. Romano, creator of the Dat Destroyer book, and I would like to go over with you some very, very important topics for the DAT and the OAT exam. So let's come along and have a look. This will also help for the MCAT. Coelomate animals. A coelomate simply means it has a body cavity. We can divide these into protostomes and deuterostomes. Now, in the embryo, the blastopore, which is an indentation in the gastrula that leads to the primitive gut or the archenteron, may become either the mouth or the anus. Now, what I would like you to do is to try to have a picture in front of you. If you go to my study notes or if you go to Google and try to have a picture, um, I know that Neil Campbell textbook has a nice picture of a blastopore so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this blastopore is an opening and it can either become the mouth or it can become the anus and that's going to define the digestive tube. If the blastopore becomes the mouth, the second opening becomes the anus and this will define the digestive tube and this is what happens in what we call protostomes. So in a protostome the blastopore, that first opening, think mouth, anus second. If the blastopore becomes the anus first, with the mouth developing from the second opening, we call this a deuterostome. Now, what I mean by a protostome, it's either an arthropod, an annelid, or a mollusk. It's a guaranteed type of question. When I say an arthropod, um, think an insect or a lobster, or a crayfish, or a crab. I'm getting hungry just even talking about these guys. So these arthropods um, include these kind of organisms. Annelids are the leeches and the earthworms. Mollusks, as you know, are like clams, snails, mussels, oysters. A deuterostome includes the chordates like us, vertebrates, man, reptiles, fish, amphibians, which I discussed in the other lecture, or deuterostomes can be the echinoderms, which include sea urchin and starfish. Now, what I want you to understand as far as this goes, protostomes could undergo what we call spiral and determinate cleavage. Now, what I need you to do is I'm a horrible artist. I didn't want to draw it, but when I say spiral cleavage, this refers to the cell alignment how the cells are positioned once cell division occurs. So if you take a look at a picture of this in any book or on Google, you'll see what I mean by when I say spiral cleavage. Now, if I say to you it's also determinant, what that means is when we have cell division, the cells isolated early on will die if separated. So we have one cell, then two cells, then four cells, if you separate those cells early at the two to four cell stage, that would mean they would die if it's a determinate cleavage. No identical twins obviously can occur, so death will occur. And this is what happens in protostomes, determinate as well as this kind of spiral cleavage. If it's a deuterostome, however, the cleavage is said to be radial, and indeterminate, sometimes some textbooks in the older days used to call it regulative cleavage. So in an indeterminate cleavage, each cell produced in the early cleavages retained the capacity to develop into a complete organism. So example, you have one cell, it divides, and now once you get to the two cell or four cell, if you do separate them, they can keep on developing and they don't die, they, they go into a viable organism. Example, identical twins. So identical twins would be a great example of this indeterminate cleavage. Or embryonic cell cell development would also be um, important in indeterminate cleavage. I hope this gives you a help on these two types of organisms, the protostomes, the, the deuterostomes. Know the examples, know the types of cleavages, and I think you said, I have a couple of really good questions on this in the Dad Destroyer book and in my bio notes. All right, I'll see you next time, and I'll be doing some work on the different germ layers. If you remember, during gastrulation, we form the endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. All right, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.